Okay, one common problem for students in this course is figuring out the thickness of a metal when you're given some, uh, some measurements to work with, okay? And typically this is a combination of both volume and density. And you kind of have to arrange it in a way to logically get yourself to a conclusion. Now this says a piece of aluminum foil, and we've all dealt with aluminum foil, is 14 centimeters by 11 centimeters. So it's like we have a rectangle of aluminum foil. And they give us a weight, 7.07 .07 grams, and then they give us a density of 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. So any chunk of pure aluminum is going to have that same density. That's a, an inherent property about it. Now it says use this information to calculate the thickness of the foil. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is think about geometric shapes. Now I drew this. It's like a little flat box. So essentially a, a piece of foil is like a rectangular prism. Okay. It's like a box. It's just a really, really, really flat box. Okay. And so what we need to do is we need to think of this in geometry uh, terms. We've got a length, a width, and a height, okay? Now, we're given this. So if you get out a chunk of foil that's in a rectangular shape, we've got a 14 centimeter by 11 centimeter chunk, okay? So we're going to pick one of these and so let's say the length is 14 centimeters and the width is 11 centimeters. Okay? So that leaves the height, okay? And the height is what's referred to here as the thickness. It's going to be a really, really small amount, especially if we're in centimeters. It's going to be a very, very tiny number. But still, it is a height. It's just a really, really small height. So height, that is our thickness, okay? When we try to calculate this, that's where it comes from, all right? Now, let's take a look at what we have to work with, all right? We've got some measurements here. We've got a density. We've got a mass, okay? And the first thing we're going to try to do is it's kind of a two-stage problem. First thing we need to do is we need to calculate the volume. We can't really calculate the volume by doing length times width times height because we don't have one of those pieces of information. <coughs> so we're going to have to try to do it kind of in a roundabout way. We're going to use density. And if you remember, density is equal to mass divided by volume. Now there's volume right there. If we want to isolate this formula and get volume by itself and solve it for volume, that's going to be rearranged and look like this. Volume equals mass divided by density, okay? Algebra will get you to that point no matter which way you take it. Eventually, that's where you end up. Okay, so I have a formula for volume. Do I have the pieces I need? I got a mass and a density. Here's a mass and here's a density. They happen to be in the same, in like comparable units, using grams in both. So I'm gonna use that to my advantage. I'm gonna say volume equals mass, which is 7.07 .07 grams divided by the density of 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. Grams is going to cancel out and all I'm left with is cubic centimeters. So if I divide those, I should be able to figure out the volume of this piece of foil, how much space it actually takes up. And in this case, that's going to equal 2.62. Okay, now what does 2.62 mean? It's going to be cubic centimeters. That's all that we have left. So basically, we've gotten ourselves, we figured out the, the, the volume using the density. Now we gotta do one more piece of the puzzle. A lot of people like to stop here and they kinda lose track of what this means. These are cubic units. That is the volume of this really flat box, 2.62 cubic centimeters. Okay, what I need to do is I need to try to extract this out now and figure out what height would it have to have in order for this to be true. So I'm gonna use one other geometry formula. Here was step one. Step two is going to be another way of getting volume, but we're going to manipulate it to fit what we want. Volume equals length times width times height. And remember, height is the thickness. Okay, those two things mean the same. That's a very easy formula. You guys have used that for boxes and cubes and stuff all the time. All right, well, let's look at what we have. We have the volume. We know that. We have the length and we have the width. We're just missing the height. So we need to rearrange this to get height by itself. So if I try to get height by itself, height is going to be volume divided by the length and the width. So let's take a look at what that will produce as far as numbers are concerned. Height is going to be volume of 2.62 cubic centimeters. I'm gonna include units here so you can follow the meaning behind this. Divided by 14 centimeters times 11. Okay, and if we simplify this down, all right, 
this is basically going to give us, I'll tell you what, let's look at this from a different perspective. I'm just going to give you a number here, but I want you to try to follow the meaning of the units. So if I just go and put this into the calculator, 2.62 divided by 14 divided by 11. Okay, if I do that, I'm going to get a value of 0 0.017. Now we got to put some meaning to that. Cubic centimeters is on top, and I have centimeters times centimeters on the bottom. When I put centimeters times centimeters together, that gives me centimeters squared. Okay, so when those two units come together as one value, centimeters squared. So I have centimeters cubed on the top and centimeters squared on the bottom. Basically, two of those are going to cancel with two of those on top, and I'm going to be left with just centimeters. And that's a linear unit, and that should represent my other linear unit for the height. Now, it's a tiny number, but that makes sense. You guys have all seen foil. It's really, 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 really thin. So this is an amount in centimeters. And it's really common in a lot of these problems for them to ask you to put that into something a little bit more reasonable. So 0 0.017 centimeters. That might be better reported in millimeters. Okay, And to change it to millimeters, all I do is multiply it by 10 or move the de decimal one spot. And I get 0 0.17 millimeters. Another way you might report that is in micrometers or micrometers. Okay, I would move the decimal three more spots and this would be 170 micrometers. Okay, all three of those basically mean the same thing. They're just on different scales. Okay, sometimes when you get to really tiny values it's better to report it in a scale where that looks like a more reasonable uh, regular looking number. Okay, now that's how you go through and find the thickness of a metal. No matter what metal or situation they're giving you, typically it has this type of information. You've got dimensions, you got a density, you got a mass. It's always a two-stage problem. We got to figure out the volume using the density formula, then we got to take that volume and plug it into a different volume formula that represents the geometry, and we use that formula to isolate the missing variable, which happens to be the thickness or the height.